Hey, everybody, it's Mark Yegi. Welcome to another weekly stock market update. Today is, what are we on, the 30th of June? I can't believe it's the 30th of freaking June already. Anyway, um, we have a great melt-up going on in the market. Now, technically, we've been yellow this week, but that just means a little bit of caution because it might have gone red. The stock has kind of said, all right, we're yellow, but you know what? We want to go green. Let me show you what that looks like. But um, I like this market. I, I hope you do too. And I hope you're making a bunch of money. We all are in our cash flow machine group. Just got off another great mastermind call. And um, let's see if I can pull the screen up here for you. And uh, a lot of people are smiling again. It's just like my theme for the basically the year because we've been in a bull market since January 9th. And uh, yeah, we're going to have some ups and downs and there's nothing that goes like a straight line. That's why they're called candles. But you can see these candles are generally in an upward direction. So if you look at the screen, we've got three greens and a red as of today. I suspect by the end of today, we'll get um, four, four greens or at least we're going to have three. We're going to be in a green market on, well, officially Monday. But the market's kind of closed at one and then Tuesday it's closed all day. We really only have a three day week next week. I mean, I, if you're a trader, if you're somebody like me that likes to have the market open so you can make money and have a good time, you're kind of bummed about all these four-day work weeks we get going on, but now it's even a three-day work week. Anyway, I'm going to make the best of it and have a lot of fun. It's been a great year so far, and I hope it's been a great year for you too. So we got, uh, we got a market that's yellow trending toward green. Let me show you what's going on and why that's happening. The NASDAQ is gapped up today. See that little gap there on the right? So we got a gap up going there on the right, and that's got some energy behind it going into this long weekend. It's a little weird that it's gapping up into the weekend, but we'll see what happens on Wednesday when the markets kind of have real traders sitting behind the screens. Uh, but Monday, the market's op open too. So we'll see what happens if we can get a follow through day, if we get a correction, we're going to fill that gap. I don't know what's going to happen, but this is a good pattern, a gap up, hopefully on good volume. Look at the S&P 500, same thing, gapping up. Hitting an all-time, not an all-time high, but a relatively uh, high, a relatively new high um, on, on pretty good volume. We'll see how that volume shakes out by the end of the day, but it gapped up as well and filled the prior gap from two weeks ago. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, same story, gapped up, filled the gap from two weeks ago, and it looks like it's uh, wanting to go up and test that 34,588. In fact, I think this whole market's going to go um, up another couple thousand points if you look at the Dow. I think we're looking at 36,000, like 36,600. Not that I like to predict markets, but I kind of use chart patterns because markets have symmetry and they can teach us stuff. So that's my target if everything seems to go well. Uh, I don't believe anything that anybody says, like Jerome Powell or Kramer or the people on Smart Money or you know whatever those shows are on any of the channels. I just don't think they know anything. I mean, in fact, if you look at Tesla, in fact, I'll pull up Tesla in a second, but well, I'll pull it up now because I, I want to talk about it for just a second. There's Tesla. Well, and you can't see all this chart, but while Tesla was going all the way down to hundred, all these smart analysts, these MBA, these brilliant people from all these Ivy league schools were telling us, Oh, you, uh, you know, we're revising our, our target points down our target prices down from 300 or 400 down to 150 or down to hundred or some even went to 80. And they said the stock was going to go to 80 and then the stock hit 101.81. See that there in January of this year. And then look where it is now to 250. And now they're all revising their numbers up. Like where were they when like, what good is it to revise it after? I mean, anybody can revise it after. I think it's going to 290. Like, am I right? Am I wrong? I can, after it goes to 290, I'll let you know if I'm right. Just it's the whole game on Wall Street is so stupid. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a game. So as long as you know it's a game, you can play it. Anyway, here's the New York Stock Exchange. Another nice chart going up to test that 15904 level. The CBOE volatility index, the volatility is down. This is your panic index. When the panic comes out of the market, money goes into the market. That's what this is showing. Panic is coming out of the market. And that's why we're getting a melt up in the market. And then we have the gold bugs index, which I want to show you because the gold bug, everybody's like, oh, you got to buy gold. It's going to triple. And it's, you know, everybody says that all the time. The gold's going to be 5,000 before the end of the year and all kinds of stuff. Look, obviously, nobody knows anything, including me. I know nothing. All I know is I can look at patterns on a chart and I can tell you what's going on, mostly in hindsight, but certainly sometimes it's indicative of the future. But gold is in trouble, guys, right? Gold is not doing what everybody said it was going to do. Um, Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is do, it's digital gold and it's doing really well, but gold is just not doing that well. The semiconductors are on fire, on fire. So that's why this technology market is melting up because semiconductors are a big play in AI. AI has been the trend for the last six months. Maybe it'll continue. Maybe it won't. I think it will. 
And since AI is on a trend, it's on a tear, so are the semiconductors and so are the semiconductors stocks if you own them. NVIDIA, on semiconductor, Intel, AMD, they're all just going crazy. And then look at our bonds. Now, I want to show you this bond was a 40-year bull market going into 2020. And since that 40-year bull market ended, we went basically from 180 down to 100. That's that's almost an 80% loss, right? It's really a, like a 70% loss, but still, it's that's a huge loss. While you were getting these paltry little 2 and 3% returns, you lost 80% or 70% or whatever the number is. It's huge, right? And supposedly like the safest investment you can be in, which is the treasuries. So don't believe any of the junk that Wall Street tells you because it's all a facade, right? Don't believe anything anybody tells you these days. Like, I don't think I can believe anybody, you know? It's just, it's just the way it is. All right. Apple, look at this stock. I talk about it every single week. It had a gap up today. This is a gorgeous stock if you're like charts. Like this is, I'm in love with this chart. Like I'm going to caress it, right? That's what Apple is doing. It's a beautiful chugger. Just chugs right along, makes a couple percent a week. We sell calls against it in the cash flow machine with certain strategies around it. It is a stock to be in love with because it's making a lot of people a lot of money. And it's not just making a lot of people a lot of money because it's going up. That helps a lot. We're selling calls against it and making money in income. That's why we call it the cash flow machine. So enough about that. We have a uh, basically a three and a half, four day work or a weekend coming up. And, um, and you know, hopefully you can disconnect and just go and enjoy some hot dogs and hamburgers with your family and, and give them a hug or whatever, because that's what really it's all about. And I certainly am planning on spending some time with some friends and, and family and having a lot of fun. And I hope you do do the same. There's a lot more important things than, uh, than making money, which is also fun too. So uh, thanks for being here. Have a great long holiday weekend. Happy Independence Day. And I'll see you next week on another weekly stock market update. Take care. Thank you.